Hello and welcome to the North Metro SBDC programming. Hi, you guys. This was the final test uh, of the class. Could you find this random link and get in here? You win. All done. We've taught you all we can now. I feel very proud that I solved the puzzle ahead of time. I feel like this is my this is you my win for the day, and I'll take it. <laughs> yes, yes, good job. Well, if we're waiting, I'll share a quick win, which is um, I've been looking for a location, and I told you the story, but it's a it, it's looking good. Um, so there's more steps to take, of course, to keep making progress on it. But the fact that it exists is promising. So I'm excited about that. That's awesome! Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Oh, that is a huge win. That is that is the most winning win today. Anybody else have a good win today while we're sitting here and trying to get our act together? <laughs> Jean, you look smiley. Did you have a win today? Um, well, I'm just really happy because today was the last day of my nature camp. So I'm officially on summer break for real. Uh, nature camp was lots of fun. I mean, as much fun as it can be with like a dozen children for like seven hours in like 95 degree heat. But it was, I mean, it was successful. Nobody had heat stroke and they all had a blast and it was experimental because those nature camp things have been so popular so we just had like Thursday was trail day and they dropped them off and picked them up so we didn't have you know just like a field trip kind of sort of thing <laughs> but I'm just really glad it's done because I was like yay now I'm actually on summer vacation <laughs> I mean if it's going to be this hot we should be on vacation it should just be a rule like if it's this hot outside no one should have to do anything no joke I was like can I sit on the couch for like 17 hours now that's what I want to do yes <laughs> nice anybody else have a win they want to share Mine's the same a little bit yesterday was my last day of, of work so I'm on summer vacation as well finally oh that's so exciting well congratulations you guys Okay, so while we are waiting, in order to get credit for this class, you have to do this survey. So I'm going to put this in the chat. I'm just going to put this here, and then we will just get started at like 6.15. Um, tonight, we're going to do some breakout groups to kind of talk about what you learned in this class. And then we'll kind of debrief a little bit and probably get you guys out of here fairly early. So that will be the summer break gift. We'll just get the stuff done we need to get done, and then we'll go forth and party and celebrate. So I put the link in the chat. Feel free to fill that out. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's what has to be filled out as a part of getting your PDIS credential or your certificate for this class. Will the certificates just show up in our PDIS or will you yes. be sending them to us? They'll just show up in there? Okay. They should just show up in the PDIS.
the link for the survey is the one that I just put in. Nope, nope, sorry. Never mind. I lied. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Okay. I thought I put the survey link in there. I did not. Okay. Um, let me share that and then I will go back and find the survey link. Sorry, now I'm putting the link to the survey in the chat. I'll put it in here for Tammy as well. Hi, Tammy. We are doing the survey for the class so that you guys are able to get your certificate. So that is in the chat now. I'll put it one more time. Oh, Raul said in the survey, you're looking for fundamentals of child care businesses, North, North Metro Denver SBDC. And then just select the dates of this this class. And do please put feedback because we do look through that together and kind of look, you know, for what we need to do and how we can change things. So I know sometimes it's a lot of content. So if there's any advice you guys have or things you wish would have been different, definitely let us know because that's really helpful. Hi, Carrie. We are taking a minute to do the survey for the class. So it's in the chat, and feel free to fill that out. Um, We're going to probably do five more minutes on that. So we need five minutes. Can you give me a thumbs up if you did it? It's Jean. It can be a virtual thumbs up or a real world thumbs up, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Carrie just started. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Not too many. So let's go ahead and we'll give it about three or four more minutes. What session is this? Just sorry, session two? This is session, it should say the dates. It says Fundamentals for Child Care Businesses, North Metro Denver, SBDC. And it'll be 5-9-2024 to 6-13-2024. Okay. Um, if I did like both live and watch recording, can I select both? No. Yeah. It's not, I have to do one or the other, it looks like. I would say live. 
Okay. Wait. Oh, I see. It's saying for each date. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. Okay, so it started on May 28th, right? It started on May 9th, I believe. Oh, yes, I, May 9th. Okay, I think I screwed up the date. I'm sorry. Can you, which is it the mastering your business? It's fundamentals for child care businesses. Okay. And then five, nine through six, 13. Okay. That's yep. right. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. <laughs> watched, we watched recording. It ended. PDS. Oh my gosh. I don't know what that means. Hi, Laura. I mean, um, Dora. Hey, how's it going, Robin? How about you? Good. It's hot. It is hot. Um, Shelly says she's sitting there and she can't get in. I don't know. She might be using the other link. So we emailed out the right link because the wrong link got sent out. Okay, so which link is it? The first one that was sent out today or? It's the one I just emailed, like, 15 minutes ago. Okay, I'll tell her. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We're just testing people, Robin. We're just gonna see who's awake, what happens. It's the final test. It's too hot for test. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and as you finish, if you're off camera, just put in the chat, please, that you wrapped it up so that I know that we are ready to move forward. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So if you haven't finished that, feel free to just kind of leave that tab open and we will move forward. We'll also have time at the end. I'll stay here if you guys have any questions um, and we can finish it up at that time as well. So for the breakout room today, we're going to really spend some time thinking about the action going forward, because I think learning is only as helpful as it is. You know, you can learn all kinds of stuff. If it doesn't help you, then there's no point, really. Um, so what are some of the things that you're going to carry with you going forward? Um, what are your next steps going to be? Did you meet with a consultant and was that helpful? Did you meet with the HR person? She was amazing. Like, how... You know, what are some things so far as that that you have found to be helpful? Um, is your next step a marketing plan? Is your next step a business plan? Is your next step to find a location? Like, what is that looking like for you? Um, share those next steps if you've met with a consultant or not. And then think about potential barriers that you might have, because we all know things don't ever go according to plan. So if you're going to move forward with a marketing, you know, campaign, or you want to do a website or whatever that may be, what are some barriers that you might have and ask for any advice that you might be looking for from the other people that have been in this class with you. Um, I know we have a really good mix here of like people that are starting businesses, people that run really large centers that are super successful, like 
all those kinds of things. You've got some great peers here and we've built like some trust throughout this course. So ask some open questions and ask for any advice that you might have, because this is a great like time and space to do some of that. You guys have any questions about that? No, okay. So we're gonna do this breakout room and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna debrief and then we're gonna get out and go celebrate or celebrate summer, I don't know, <laughs> do something. something cool in the air conditioning maybe, but we should get out, I would guess probably by like 7, 15-ish. That's my goal. All right, you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to come back in here and I will be in this main room waiting for you. And we will come back probably like 6.35, so like a good 15 minutes or so. All right, see you soon. happening for you <laughs> well we were just, they were just talking about the family um leave the family paid leave act well, it doesn't affect me because i'm, a, I'm a, a home provider but for the centers it does so they were talking about that and we did we got cut off actually <laughs> yeah, we, I, oh, no. I just had asked how, how, how that impacted them because i personally i haven't been impacted my program hasn't been impacted but i know people who have taken it and they said it was fairly easy process and Mm -hmm. um, they fill out the forms and they get 90% of their income and they're enjoying their 10 weeks off or whatever the number is. And um, I'm just concerned because I know, you know, if one person figures that out, it could kind of spread like wildfire and you have multiple people taking these. And I understand yeah. the family need. It's important. I get that. But we You're were thinking also going to get more abused than when it was. When does a program not get abused? You tell me. <laughs> oh. um, and I, you know, I shouldn't think that way. And so far, like I said, we haven't had that problem, but it does in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, I'm waiting for that first employee to come in and then say, oh, guys, get what I, you know, I had a mental health leave and I'm going to be gone for the next three months. And they'll say, how did you do that? And I get 90% of my pay, you know, or whatever. And I'm just concerned that it's going to, and then, you know, as a small business, we were talking about how hard it is to hire, how hard it is to get people to call in and, 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 and start the job. Once they start the job, how much lost time, someone mentioned about that. They have a sore throat. They missing three of the four days, you know, five days a week. I mean, and then you're supposed, I mean, and I, like I said, I understand the importance of family leave, but it's hard to put it into our um, framework because racials are so critical and licensing doesn't care, you know, you get a body in there and it's hard, a lot, you know, a qualified body and it's hard in our, and not that it's not hard in other businesses. I'm just whining. Thank you. It's a real <laughs> thing. Whining. It's, a, it's not whining. You're just, you're, you're constructively whining. venting. You're, you're okay. constructively venting. You're discussing your concerns. It's I've just a, a lot of programs that have had that where people have figured that out and they can't staff themselves to save their lives. Like they like same thing. Like it's great for employees and stuff, but like they cannot keep anyone there because everybody is just trying to go. And there's you can't stop them. Like if they <laughs> figure that you out, can. there's nothing you can do about it. Right. It's out of your control. You can't approve it. You can't, you know, deny it. If they go through the state, it's a done deal. And, you know, you're notified that such and such will be gone for the next seven weeks or 10 weeks or whatever. And, and like I said, I, only because I know two teachers and they were, well, one's, yeah, two teachers at, um, L, one was at an elementary school and the other one's at a high school and they've done it. And they're, they got their time off. They're getting paid for it. And they're, you know, exploring other options because they got burned out on teaching. But, you know, you're kind of stuck from the entrepreneur side. You're stuck saying, I have to hold these spots because these people have a right to come back to these spots if they choose to. And, you know, so then whoever you hired, it's really a temp position. And they get calls and say, oh, I got a permanent job. You know, and I can't blame them for keep looking to get something that they want and that's more long term and more yeah. um, steady for them. They have a lot of livelihood. The economy here is pretty tight. It's, it's expensive to live here and waits for no one. Yeah. So, I know a lot of programs just over hire because it's hard. Like if they do have too many people, it's only for like a week or two because then somebody else is on leave or something else is happening. And it's like, well, 
I don't know if financially it's better to like over hire and have maybe an extra one or two people, but it's so hard to get those people that it's like, maybe it's worth it. I'm like, just paying this person for like, I don't know, even an extra month, like being overstaffed isn't really a thing, like kind of, but it's better than having to recruit constantly. Right. Right. I, I understand. But also, like I said, the concern is, I mean, I, from the entrepreneur side, or the you know program owner manager whatever and then that's my complaints but then from the employee side I also know employees talk and one says you know girl I'm tired I need a break my husband's not feeling well I'm gonna take this leave and then she's you're gonna say really how did you do that oh well you know I'm taking care of my grandmother and I need a break and I can get 90 percent of my income you know yeah. When it was short-term disability, people didn't want to go down to 60% of their income. You know, that was a deterrent, actually, being honest. But 90% yeah. of your income to stay home and take care of someone, which is great for the employee. It's not so great for the employer. So yeah. that's all. It's true. It's hard, too. Like, we want to do right by our staff, but you do. it does not make it easy. I mean, ultimately, I want it for the employees. I want it for people. Um, you know, and I had an employee use it this year. She was pregnant and she was pregnant with her fifth child. And during that pregnancy, her husband died. And she was now, you know, about to be a single mom of five children. And she decided to keep working after his death to, you know, keep making money. And then she took that family leave and was able, you know, to take four months off is on that leave right now. Um, with almost full pay um, to take care of her children and take care of herself. And I'm so glad that was there for her. And I want it to be there for teachers who have things like that happen or people who are just burnt out and can't function in a workplace well anymore because we, we don't want those burnout teachers in our classrooms either. So it's hard. It is hard. And it's I feel hard. like I, I agree with everything you're saying. It's just hard. It's hard balancing that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's hard to find a temporary replacement. Yeah. I mean, so you're I, first, I mean, it's great that she's able to stay at home and she had all kinds of extenuating circumstances. And I understand that. And yes, I want to support her. And like you said, you don't want the burnout teachers there, but then you get burned out because if the teacher's not there, then you're there. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's hard to hire. It's just, it's just trying to balance that. It's a tough yeah. thing to balance. That's all. I That's think all one I'm of the have. things licensing could really do to help with all of this is not require us to have fully qualified subs at all times, that you have to have a sub of equal education and experience to whoever there, you know, that is too much. It's too much to ask. Um, and I do, like I've said before, I do legal consulting in states all over the U.S. in lawsuits involving children in child care centers. And so I read the rules and regs for all sorts of different. I've read the rules and regs for tons of different states. Ours are so much stricter than everywhere else. I have never read rules as strict as Colorado's in all the states that I've done lawsuits in. Um, and one of them is you can have a sub who's properly background checked. You know, there's not like no requirements for them, you know, but almost every other state allows you to put subs, subs in who haven't taken college classes, you know, and like, it just makes such a huge difference. It would make a huge difference for us um, because I often do have subs who aren't qualified, but what else am I supposed to do? Shut down for the day? Is that what the state wants me to do? Shut down for the day because a teacher is sick and the only sub I can find because most people who are early childhood teacher qualified don't want to be subs. Um, you know, uh, so I don't, I really, that is where I feel like it's that systemic issue. It's not the employees who need time off. It's that we don't have systems in place that support everyone affected by that. I think it's hard too, because sometimes they do ease up on like the requirements, but then everybody's mad about that. Like the director requirements used to be like pretty strict and now it's like gotten loose enough that everybody's like, everybody's a director. And it's like, well, I mean, that's good though. Yeah. So like, rising just, tide, all ships, we can do this, right? I think we're missing that part sometimes because it is hard when you've struggled through so many licensing rules and regs and like 
then it's like, well, okay. Or maybe they have people that aren't very good teachers that are director qualified and they're concerned about that. Like, well, there's sometimes there's just no winning with that kind of stuff. But it'd be great I, if it was easier. I remember years ago where you could have someone, an aide like that, that was allowed to be in the classroom at um, during lunchtime, nap time, before and after school or something. And they changed that. And that was helpful. It was helpful because there are times, like you said, you're, because I guess if there's no teacher, you are the teacher, you know what I mean? And it's hard to do all things and be right for everybody. And it's hard, it's challenging. Um, but I still love the field and I'm here for the duration, but you know, that's important. I, I, it's interesting to hear that other states do have relaxed rules and allow um, people to do a little something different. So maybe we can introduce that to some of the licensing here, some of the people here. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. I just, we gotta get licensing to like, you know, hear us. Um, cause all them rules, some of them are real good. And it's a, a lot of times on these lawsuits, I'm like, boy, if Oklahoma had better rules, that baby would still be alive, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and so there are times when I'm like, I'm so like in Colorado, you know, you couldn't ever just leave a baby alone in a room unattended. Um, and you know, so like, but in Oklahoma you can, so, um, you're right. So some of the rules I'm like, oh, good good job, Colorado, like way to have rules that keep children alive. That's great. But I don't think a substitute teacher needs to have taken ECE classes. I just don't. Was that brought up to them when they were going over the rules and regs? Had anybody brought that up? Because I know they were listening to people and some of the rules had changed. Yeah, they have to do that when they promulgate the rules, which they're required to do per state legislation, I believe like every seven years or something like that, they have to promulgate, not necessarily all new rules, but they have to go through a process of reviewing and republishing and they have to do public listening sessions and like all of that's required. So I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure people have brought it up, but I don't know for sure. I'll have to, so I'm with Jefferson County Child Care Association and I know our, the lady that runs our, um, council like she was in some of those meetings and they got some of the rules changed for home providers because they were trying to get they were going one direction and they heard so I'm just wondering I can ask her and find out if anybody had ever brought that up to them when they were doing the the listening you know to other people because I don't know maybe maybe there wasn't enough centers voicing that with those rules I think they pick and choose what they solicit feedback on. Like, I think they say like, okay, right now we're looking at this rule and give us feedback on it or whatever. But I don't, some of those things, it's hard to tell. Like with UPK, there was a lot of feedback around the ratios in the classroom and the group size because it was really financially harmful to providers. So they heard a lot of feedback around that and they should have just changed it, but instead they just kind of like delayed it and pushed it down the line more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard to tell if it's like actually being heard or if it's just like, yeah, yeah, all right, sure, mm -hmm, we'll do that. Yeah, all right. I would I'm glad you brought that up, Dora. What, what is the ratio for UPK? UPK ratio yeah, can now stay the same. It's gonna stay the same? Yes. For okay. now it's that one, one to 12, right? Yes. Yeah. So right now it's following licensing. And then I think the next year it goes down one. So it'll be one to 11. And then the year after that, it'll be one to 10. And same thing okay. with group sizes. Okay. I heard, I heard somewhere someone was saying that um, if you get a level four Colorado Shines rating, that you can keep the one to 12 in UPK and not reduce in the upcoming years. Yes, I think that is true too. Mm -hmm. which is good I guess like it pushes more people to get rated but the rating has its own problems too I think they're trying to look at like the equity in that and uh, I mean quality improvement systems on their own are like a whole other thing I heard that a lot of the um, 
lot of the ratings are going down. Is is that what you also heard? People are not maintaining their same or going up higher. I haven't seen that in Denver as much, but it might be happening somewhere else. Okay. I have another question. You talked about CCAP changing and the rates changing. Have you heard any updates on that? What's happening with that? The last thing I heard was that they were increasing the rates for infants by like 40%, but the State Department of Human Services or CDEC, I don't know who even has CCAP right now. I think it moved over to CDEC. They want to do it over like a three-year period of time. And so I don't know. There's some pushback around that because people just want it to be immediate. But they're worried that if they pay more for infant care just right off the bat, that'll trigger waiting lists. And from what I've seen in Denver specifically, I can't speak to other places, but in Denver, like when CCAP did go on a waiting list, I don't know, like 10 years ago or something, maybe longer than that, everybody went on TANF. Like all the parents quit working and went on TANF because they couldn't work enough to pay for childcare without CCAP. So they just quit and went on TANF, which is not great. I know Jessica's on a wait list right now because I got an email from them a few weeks back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a family who was supposed to start and couldn't um, due to that. So they're um, only going to increase infants and not going to increase the other categories? Is that what's happening? Um, they're starting with infants, I think, because infants are so, the reimbursement rate for infants is so much, like so far below the market. It's terrible. Rate, cost of care. Yeah. Like, it is so, it's crazy. It's really, really bad. Like, I think really the cost of care for an infant is around like 3,500 to 3,900, depending on like where you're located at. And the reimbursement for CCAP right now is at like a level four is probably like 1,200 maybe. Like it's really, really low. Yeah. It's not even close to enough to properly care for an mm -hmm. infant. Yeah. I think that's um, why some like home providers don't take CCAP is because you can't bank mm -hmm. on that income you know, like we need children that can pay, you know, our parents that can pay the full amount to be able to survive, to pay our, you know, bills and stuff. I, where I live, um, I've been on CCAP for a couple of years now, but I've never gotten a phone call for CCAP. And I think it's just because of the area we live in, but um, I'm willing to, but yeah, I know a lot of providers just won't do it because of that, because of the pay rate. Yeah. CCAP pays me about half uh what my full pay tuition parents pay but i'm in the westwood neighborhood in denver which is one of the lowest income neighborhoods in the city so it would be unethical of me to not take ccap you know so mm -hmm. um so next year i'm i'm if everything goes well i will make an 895 dollar profit at the end of the year <laughs> and if i had proper ccap i might actually make more of a profit than that but yeah that's that's where i'm at right now with CCAP reimbursement rates, I'll, I'll make $895. I mean, I'll pay myself a salary the whole year, but as far as actual profit on the business, that's what my budget is showing. And I'm wow. like, oh, CCAP. <laughs> well, and the thing with CCAP is that the rates don't differentiate. There's not like different pots of money based on ages. So when they pay more for infants, that money comes out of the same like federal block grants. So it's not, that's what could trigger a waiting list. Like it's not even just about the infants specifically, but like the more CCAP's paying out, the faster they go through the money. And I do know that there are some ways for them to buy CCAP dollars from other counties. Like Jeffco, I don't think uses all of theirs very much because they're like a wealthier county or something. So they just don't use as much of their CCAP money. So they can try to figure something like that out. I don't know if it's better to like pay providers more for the provider's sake, but have a waiting list and not be able to serve as many children. I mean, I think that's just the way we have to go. Like, it's not sustainable any other way. It's not. But the real solution is you properly tax billionaires and corporations so there's enough money for all of those things. Oh, now, RB. No, don't be silly now. This is not like day three main class. <laughs> it's not making so much sense in here. <laughs> I'd just be too smart, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Do you know about when they're going to start paying for CCAP in advance versus reimbursing? 
So all of that is a part of the same rule that just passed. Yeah. So I know they talked about it a little bit in the rack today. Like now that those laws have passed, now they have to figure out like the timeline and the mechanics and how that's going to work and what the system's going to look like and how that's going to pay and put out a contract probably for whoever's going to make that system or change what it, like I'm, they have like that three year rollout they want to do, but I think that this is a great time for providers to push and say, you know, what, we've already been underpaid for like decades. So let's yeah. just do this now. I need it to happen post haste. Yeah. yeah. I think it's great that they're um, going to pay for days that the children don't attend too. Cause like all of our other families have to pay for that anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that encourages them to bring like centers to allow sick kids to come to school. You know, it encourages centers to never close, to give teachers breaks. It's like, yeah, it, it encourages a level of grind that is not necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think like that advocacy piece around all of these things is like an ongoing battle. And for some reason, the people that make these rules and pass this legislation get like further and further off the ground to where they're really like not very in touch with what providers need and just like aren't really in the community to understand. Like by the time they get so high up there, I don't even think they've been in classrooms for like literally years. Like I, it's hard because then you're trying to advocate to people that think they know, but they don't really know. And things change all the time. Dora, can you share again what your role is? I feel like to me, you are like the face of the in between, you're the voice of the people. And okay. yeah. I assume that's not your job title. I could be. Um, so I do like coaching with directors. So like I run a director equity and advocacy group, or I show up to the rack to like listen to what they're trying to say and like make a comment if I can, or if it's reasonable for me to do that. But a lot of it is basically coaching with directors. So like, how do you handle challenging teachers? And how do you handle arguments between teachers? Or somebody walked out, what do you do? There's just crazy stuff that happens in child care centers. And so like, how do you really prepare for that and address those things? So that's kind of what I do. I have a lot of like leadership trainings and stuff like that. I really like the leadership part, the businessy stuff. I'm like, this is also important. It's just not as fun. <laughs> That's why there's all these consultants. Like, go find the financial consultant. I'm sure they're great. <laughs> they could do that. The legal structure lady, amazing, great. She could do that. Cool. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions? What did you guys take away from this class? Was this helpful? Was it kind of a lot? Do you think you're going to use this? Like, what is your like real feedback around this? Like, is it productive? Is it things you already knew? I think for me, I mean, obviously, since I'm a home pro provider, there were some things that didn't apply to me. But then there were some things that that did, you know, like um, the budgeting part, because another girl and I were talking like, I, I can use that. So, um, so there was, there was some classes that I took that definitely I could utilize. No, I've been in childcare for 20 plus years now. I thought the class was excellent. It was a refresher course for a lot of things. Um, some of the things that explained why I was what I was like the L. LLC. I went to an attorney. They told me that was the way to go. So now I got more background information on it. Um, the marketing piece, you know, I don't do it as much as I used to. And I got that push to say, you need to do that. You know, you're doing a good thing. That's probably one of the reasons you're still standing because, you know, it's a hard business. Um, I think um, insurance, you know, I've never taken a chance, but there's those times when you think, hey, could take a chance. I could take lesser money and then maybe, you know, pay my teachers more or whatever. And then I haven't. And so it 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 just really was really a lot of information, well-rounded. And I learned about the new law about um sick time. I was giving my employees sick time, but I didn't know I had to. And it was one hour for every 30 hours work. I did not know that. And so things like that um were extremely beneficial and put me back into the mind brain of what I need to be focusing on. And, you know, the, all of the 
paperwork, you know, of course it's tedious, but it's important. And so, you know, it just made me say, okay, yep, keep doing this or start doing this or create that cash flow um, forecast or update your budget or whatever, you know. And because I'm like everybody else, there's times where it's like, ah, oh, just let it sit there, it's sit there to come. And then you cram at the end to create your whole year. So, you know, I, th I think it was extremely good. So I would highly recommend it to other teachers. I mean, uh, not other, te other programs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we're doing this class three more times next year. So really like your guys' feedback's really helpful because I know sometimes it's a lot. And trying to like translate it into ECE sometimes is like, okay, this, this way, like this, okay. But it's a lot sometimes, just all in like an hour to hear so much information. But really, like take advantage of the consultants because they're amazing. All right. Any other thoughts, comments? I'm going to get you guys out of here early to go celebrate summer or whatever is happening. <laughs> no? Good? Okay. Use the consultants. If you need anything, go through like the SBDC. They're really helpful. They're amazing. Um, and I think that's about it. Good job, Thank guys. You so Maybe. much. Appreciate you and Raul. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You too. Good luck, everybody. Yes. You. you too. Thanks. Bye.